Well, hi everyone and thanks for, for coming to this. I'm sure everyone's quite busy in their own right. Um, so to introduce myself, my name is Laura Hegarty. I'm a lecturer at GMIT and as part of my presentation, I'm going to talk to you about what I embedded as part of my teaching or, and learning, I suppose, as UDL when I was introduced to this course. So just to tell you a little bit about me, um, so currently I'm a lecturer in GMIT, both on the Mayo and Galway campus, um, and a little bit about my education background. I did five years of, I suppose, electronic and computer engineering, and then I was working with Ericsson then in Dublin, and I did a master's part-time while I was working full-time, so it was great to kind of get a little bit of a, an education master's on top of all the technical work I did. So I worked with Ericsson, um, I traveled the world teaching, I suppose, a lot of engineers in the telco industry. So quite a high, um, kind of, uh, how would I say, a challenging job in the sense, you're, you know, you're working with engineers who are quite highly skilled in their areas around the globe and teaching very different cultures, different backgrounds. And then um, I suppose I moved on then um, purely because of travel, only reason I left. I saw my roadmap um, for the next few years and it was a lot of travel. So then I moved and got a job with NCBI, the National Council for the Blind in Dublin, in Drumcondra. So I worked as a system administrator and an IT trainer and a very different role, um, completely different target audience in the sense that they now had, or I was challenged with um, them having a visual impairment. So I went from teaching, you know, as I said, engineers in their area of expertise to now use an assistive technology to be able to teach um, my service users in their own environment, whether it was at school, whether it was at home, whether it was at work, and depending on the assistive technology. So assistive technology is an aid to allow, in, in my case, visually impaired um, service users to I suppose use technology just like the rest of us. So if you're, if they were completely blind, they'd use a screen reader. If they were low vision, they would use um, a magnifier or um, a zoom piece of software. So there, there are many types. So that would mean that I could go to their houses and I would be able to show them how to surf the internet with it, the use of assistive technology, where I would allow them to be able to communicate with friends and family around the world. So it, it was very empowering. I loved my job so much, but m my way of teaching was very, very different. So it just meant that I taught, I ended up teaching sometimes people who didn't even know how to turn on a computer and obviously vision being, being their obstacle. So it, it was very challenging and I had to completely change my way of teaching because I now had a different audience. So I thoroughly enjoyed my job, loved it, but it was in Dublin and I'm a, a woman from the West. So um, I made my way back to the West and now working in GMIT and CompuPAC as well was uh, in IT Sli in Sligo. Um, it, it was where I lectured online as well. So that's kind of a little bit of a background about myself. But what I introduced as part of this UDL course was it was, it was a module based on the Galway campus um, called Digital Business. So they were third year students there was about 259 of them and they all shared a module across many different programs. So I had BIS, which would be more technical students, marketing and sales, agribusiness, accounting and finance and business. So the learning environment that we use is uh, Moodle. That's our learning environment. So I was quite aware I had a large audience of different cultural backgrounds through foreign students, Erasmus. So I knew I would be teaching, you know, quite a varied degree of um, cultural differences and cultural understandings. I knew then I would have had students with different learning abilities and learning styles. So that was something I was quite aware of. And then different demographics from students just out of college or school to older um, mature students who returned to college. So my audience was very, very varied and I had a lot of them. So as part of my course, I wanted to implement something but be very open-minded about my audience. So what you're seeing here is just a screenshot of the interface for my module. And the way I designed it was I literally went by week. So for example, here highlighted week five. So that would mean we're currently in week five or the content was inside week five. 
and then I would upload images that would relate, for example, continuous assessments, resources. So I would put in images there that visually, in a way that they're able to look at it and kind of capture what's behind that topic, so to say. So I tried to keep my interface quite simple. And as we moved through the weeks, students were able to, you know, find where they were within the Moodle environment. So I tried to keep it as simple as possible. So what did I do? What changes did I make? So one big task was, I had a lot of students and I wanted to to give them a choice. So they does all designed. I had 259 websites where they all designed them for me using WordPress. But I wanted to give students the choice where when they were to present their website to me for the 40% at the end of the year, I wanted to ask them if they were given a choice, what would they choose? Okay, so I created a forum. So I had 190 students who participated. Um, so you can see here in the in the kind of orangey color, the show and tell. So I basically had three choices, show and tell using an overhead projector. So I thought maybe students who would have a little bit more confidence might like to use an overhead projector in front of that group. The show and tell would be where I would move from workstation to workstation within a lab environment. And then the students, I would assess the students there and then. Okay, so really only the two people either side of the student would kind of hear what they've done as part of their, their website. And then the other one, I wanted to cater for an audience who perhaps might be that little bit more shy, but you know, quite competent in their area. So it was where I gave them a choice that if you wanted to create a short video and upload it, you don't need to present, but yet every one of them, no matter what choice you selected, you all had to um, present to the same learning outcome. So that was the feedback I got. 16 did it wanted to do a show and tell using an overhead projector. 149 was to do the kind of workstation in the lab environment. And then 22 so opted to select a video. So because I had a lot of interest in it, I said, okay, I'm going to roll this out. And in my CA topic within Moodle, I had created kind of, um, or I divided the different, depending on whichever student selected whichever group. So this first one here, this is an overhead of, you know, the topic and the learning outcomes of the website. This one here is where students would upload their website to me, um, again, giving them the date when they needed to do it. If you wanted to um, create the workstation, you needed to upload it in here. And then if you wanted to create your website for a video submission, you upload it here. So I tried to kind of keep systematic and simple as, as much as I could. Now, what I did mean is for the guys who create the video, I did need to go off and create little videos to help them create the video themselves. So for example, I created a video using PowerPoint, using an overhead, um, sorry, a video to how to use PowerPoint, which was seven minutes, a video how to use screen matic again, six, seven minutes. So it demonstrated very logically how to go about creating videos. And then the final video was how to upload your video for submission. So that was kind of content I created and made available for the students who selected the video submission choice. And what I also did was I added um, the captions on the video. Okay, so that allowed them to be able to, uh, I suppose, read it as well as, as, um, as view the video. I also embedded um, uh, individual learning plan for students because they had all said they've so much CAs, so much scheduling. So this was a template that I gave them that they could reuse over and over again um, as part of their um, learning. Okay, so it was something they found useful. I also um, created multiple means of representation. So it meant where I uploaded PowerPoint slides. I also uploaded PDFs and Word documents. So depending on your device, depending on the user, they all had, um, I suppose, a choice of having content in, in many different formats. So just having that representation for them. So coming to the very end, after I implemented all of it and the students did their representation of these, uh, presented their websites to me, I asked them, I did a little survey at the end to ask them, did other lecturers implement UDL within GMIT? And some of them said yes, 21%. 16 said no, six said maybe. Question two is, do you think students should have the input into how they are assessed for CAs? And you can see there quite clearly, 39 of the students very strongly said, yes, they should have an input into how they are assessed. So that kind of gave me um, 
a, a lot to think about. So the website assessment, all students had a choice using the overhead projector, or creating the video or doing the workstation. So I asked them, was it something that helped them with their assessment? And again, 43% yes. And then the last question I asked them was for the module, do you think universal design was applied? So content design, choice of documents, videos, captions, etc. And again, I got 43 replies. So coming to the end, um, this was some, I suppose, feedback results that I got from students saying that, you know, they enjoyed it. It was, it was nice to have that choice. It was a pro progressive idea. But one of them that really stood out to me was this one here where one student said, I felt that giving us a choice made it more personal and adapted to students' learning styles and abilities. I felt that it allowed us to, be ch to challenge ourselves in different ways. I felt like I was taking ownership. So the feedback was very good and positive um, and it, it gave me a lot I, I, in return for, for the work I did. So in summary, um, this has impacted him for me hugely. Um, a lot of work was done in the sense of creating this for my students, probably because of the amount of students I had. But I provided means of representation, means of expression and engagement. Did a lot of work myself. I, I, I continue to do this and I provide it for all the rest of my students where I give them a choice of representation when it comes to content. And I also attained the facilitation badge. So this is certainly something I would love to, to roll out within GMIT. So my last slide is really just a reflection to, I guess, add the, ask the audience that if you were to reflect on your knowledge and what you, I suppose, have gained from by the end of this session and what you understand by UDL, how would you implement this into your practice? And just it's just something to think about. Um, in my kind of knowledge, I would say take little micro steps. Don't think of this as a huge challenge you need to do straight away. It's a building block and you do it over time. And finally, um, just to say UDL, in my opinion, should be part of our pedagogy and not think of it in relation to a disability that we should think universal in how we design for, for our, our audience. So just to thank Dara um, hugely for the opportunity to, to, to facilitate or to, to be here today and for the course as well as Lisa Padden. And I cannot forget my, my trio or my triad peers. Um, so I had Liz Hanley and Tom O'Shaughnessy, um, which, which was my group that I would have worked with. And then another colleague, Sharon Boyle as well from GMIT Mayo, who also participated. So just okay. to say thank you.